When we come to the meditation, we don't usually come empty-handed. We're actually carrying a lot of burdens with us. It's all too easy when you sit down, close your eyes. But a lot of the stories from the past come flooding into your mind. They've been kept at bay as you go through the activities of your normal day. And here is an empty space, so they come flooding in. And you need to find a few effective ways of getting them out of the way so you can settle down. And one is that whatever stories you may have about how you were wronged by this person, or how you've picked up bad habits from your family, issues at work, whatever, think of it all as karma. And think of karma going back quite a ways. In the sense that, okay, what you have now may be the result of your past karma, but then that past karma may have been picked up from somebody else. And they picked it up from you, and you picked it up from them. If you trace this back long enough, you begin to think that it doesn't really matter whose karma it is. It's just karma. And when you can depersonalize it that way, it makes it a lot easier to put the stories down. So it's not so much you're to blame, it's just that and someone else is innocent. It's more that everybody has been throwing stuff around for a long time. And it doesn't really matter who started it. What matters now is, do you want to keep it up? Do you want to keep it going? This is one of the reasons why Buddhism isn't all that big on justice having to be done. Because the question is, where does the story start? To have a just resolution of something, you have to know who started, who threw the first stone, or who overreacted to the first stone. But here it's impossible to tell. So instead the Buddha counsels wisdom. Get out. Get out of the back and forth. And here's your opening. You can pull out of all those narratives in your head and just be here with your body. And just as it's good to depersonalize the narratives, try to depersonalize your body. It's just breath. Just sensations felt through the breath. And as you're settling in, it's just you, you and your breath. Nobody else has to get involved. You don't have to compare yourself, how well other people may be able to play with the breath and do things with the breath as compared to you. You're just dealing with your breath. And nobody else is going to get involved. Nobody else has any role to play. It's just an issue between you and your breath. The question is, how can you settle down? What's the best way to get the breath so that it feels good enough to settle down? Not perfect. We're not here running a breath competition. There'd be no way to judge the results, judge the contestants. We're here to get the breath so it's okay enough to want to settle down, feel okay in the present moment. So you're willing to stay here. So in some cases this means working through patterns of tension that have been there for a long, long time in the body. Years back when I was first meditating with John Fuang, I began to notice there was a bit of tension in one of my feet. And if I tried to focus too intently on it, it just stayed tense. So I worked around the edges. And then one day it released. And as it released, I suddenly remembered an incident from my childhood that I'd forgotten. 
I was in our barn up in the second story, and I jumped down into a pile of hay, and there was a nail on the pile of hay. It went right through my foot. So even though the wound had healed a long time ago, there was still a knot of tension in there that I've been carrying around ever since then. And that was just a physical problem. Sometimes there are psychological problems that are knotted up inside, and it's going to take a long time working both from the side of the breath and from the side of your attitudes to untie that knot. So be patient with the knots. Be patient with the hard spots in the body that just don't seem to respond to the breath. Focus on the spots you can make comfortable. They're going to be your home. And just gently work around everything else. You're trying to gather your forces here. Which sections of the body feel good? Can you think of connecting them? And think of the breath as your initial experience of the body. Everything else you experience about the body has to come through the breath. All the other elements, pains and pleasures, they have to come through the breath. Think of it in that way. That puts the breath up in the forefront, and also gives you the sense of it's here first. All too often we have the idea where there's the solid part of the body and then you have to push the breath through there. The solid part was there first. The breath is a sojourner. But think about the other way around. The breath is first. The sense of solidity comes afterward. Your ability to switch context like this is going to be important. Not only as you get settled down with the breath in the body, but also as you deal with other issues in the mind. We talked about one already. It was the, the issues in the mind. Instead of thinking it's me having these issues with these people, just think it's karma. Your sense of you is a kind of karma. Your sense of yourself being wrong is a kind of karma. That tends to act as a solvent to help dissolve a lot of the narratives. Your sense of the world in which you exist, that's also an act of becoming. We were talking the other day about how dependent core rising doesn't happen inside you or inside the world. You and the world happen inside dependent core rising, which gives you a greater sense of the fluidity of all of this. That your habits are not etched in stone. You're not etched in stone. The world around you is not etched in stone. These things are processes. And you learn how to bring some more knowledge to these processes. They can dissolve away a lot of the problems that we tend to build up around ourselves and our worlds, our bodies. So learn to switch the context around. Turn your narratives inside out. Turn your sense of the body inside out. It's not the solid body that the breath has to push into. The breath is there first. It's got every right to be there first. The other sensations of solidity and warmth and coolness, they come after. When you turn things inside out like this, you get a new perspective. And it loosens up a lot of your old attachments. So as you learn to depersonalize things, give them a new context. A lot of the old stories dissolve away. A lot of your problems of settling the mind down dissolve away. And you begin to see attachments you didn't see before, how they were getting in your way, now that you're on the other side of them. 